one of the holdout members who just hours ago switched his vote to McCarthy, joins us now, a freshman member of the 118th from the great state of Tennessee, Andy Ogles. Uh, great to see you, sir. Thanks for being here. What turned you around? Well, you know, uh, you know, in good faith, uh, the leadership and the Freedom Caucus has been negotiating on a rules package, and uh, we made incredible pro progress today. Uh, and, and so here we are in good faith. Uh, I went ahead and switched my vote. Now, obviously, there's some minor details that have to be worked out, but there, there's actually the possibility that we could have a speaker tonight. Well, let me, let me ask about some details of, of what might have changed. Uh, we're hearing that a balance, something about a balanced budget are, is going to be in the order of business of the new Congress. Can you tell us about that? Well, I won't go into the specifics, but you know, one of the things that we're trying to strive is to to roll back some of the spending in the 1.7 trillion omnibus and start cutting away at the the runaway spending. And so, part of that is to have a plan of how are we going to balance this budget? That's what the American people want. That's what I came up here to fight for. Yes. And so, by withholding my vote and making sure that we negotiated this rules package, it was an achievement to to that end. By the way, just for our viewers' sake, I want to tell them something about you. Uh, you're a businessman. You got a grounding in business. You know what works and, and what doesn't work. You also have a grounding uh, in the work of Art Laffer and others who, uh, who actually know uh, something about balancing a budget. They've worked with Congresses in the past that have actually done that. Uh, but you're also interested in the whole aspect of dynamic scoring, something that, that Congress has been very slow to get into. That is, if you, if you cut taxes or raise taxes, there is a dynamic effect on the economy, and that is usually not taken into account by the CBO, by the Congressional Budget Office. Is there anything in the New Deal about dynamic scoring? Well, I, I think what you'll see is that uh, there's, there's got to be a process by which if, we, if you're going to do a continuing resolution that there's a little bit of pain associated with it. Like we've got to start passing real budgets with the real plan. And so part of that process, which, which will infect your dynamic scoring, is, is to actually, okay, we're going to do a continuing CR and there's going to be a cut associated with it. And if you do it again, there's going to be another cut associated with it. And so uh, that's one of those things. And by the way, Dr. Laffer, a huge friend of mine, mentor of mine, and uh, uh, you know, too, when you want to know about economics, uh, there's, <laughs> who else are you going to go to but Dr. Laffer? Exactly. I'd, also, uh, one of the things that's really hurt a lot of folks over the past couple of weeks that care about the direction of the economy is the Omni Bill, the fact that the Senate was so quick to go along with it, despite the fact that it was filled with pork spending, uh, the, the IRS uh, deal that was in there, the supersizing of the IRS, the, the question of whether or not bills are going to go directly to the Senate or whether you're going to force bills that are more uh, in, akin to the new 118th majority. Uh, that, I understand, There's, there are details about that in the New Deal with McCarthy, no? Yeah, well, first of all, when you, when you talk about the Omni, I, I, was, I was offended by the Omni. To spend that much money on the heels of a new Congress, uh, that, that was really unacceptable. And so here we are, we're going to get back to work for the American people, but, you know, there's a lot that has to be done here, and and when you, when you look at this spending, and you know, for me, you know, if you if you ask why did I flip my vote, you know, over the years, over the last couple of decades, the the ability for a regular rank and file member to do their job has been restricted. I mean, I, I always say it's akin to the rules of Monopoly or or a red light green light, that game that you would play as a kid, yeah. right? The rules can actually favor a player. The rules can actually determine an outcome. And what we've seen over the last decade is that the rules were predetermining outcomes and with the rules package that we've put together that we fought for uh, that is going to be transformative making sure that the rules are even for the American people now again we're in a mess and you know you talked about inflation for a moment you know this is econ 101 when the government puts too much money into the economy the backside of that is some form of inflation the mm -hmm. only question is is how much and so here we are in an inflationary period we're looking at recession and they're going to spend 1.7 trillion that's almost criminal in my mind, but it's certainly offensive. You know, you, you talked a little bit about the process and, and how much of the deal making over the past couple of days has been about the process. Some people say, geez, it was a, it was a horrible process. It looked bad. Uh, the Democrats were laughing about it. Uh, they were united. Republicans were not. On the other hand, Newt Gingrich had a tweet out, uh, I think it was late yesterday. He said, I prefer 
the clumsy, frustrating, open process in the U.S. House to the way Putin or Xi Jinping or the Iranian Ayatollah or Kim Jong-un would handle it. Yes, freedom can be frustrating, sloppy, slightly uncontrollable, but amazingly creative. That is the joy of being an American. Do you agree with Newt? Absolutely. I mean, look, our founding fathers intended for the, the House of Representatives to be the people's house. John Quincy Adams loved the House of Representatives because it was raucous. It, it was a body that was designed to debate, to argue. And what you've seen over the last few days is you've had almost a unanimous number of members of Congress in the chamber fighting it out, debating it out, and at times arguing, I'm going to be honest, to, to achieve an outcome that's better for the American people. I mean, that's what, that's what we all want, regardless, regardless of where you're at on the political spectrum. The fact that your member will be able to go down and offer an amendment on, an, uh, on a spending uh, a piece of legislation on the, the House floor, ladies and gentlemen, that hasn't happened in a very long time, and this is a big deal for the American people. You know, the other thing, yesterday, again, about process, yesterday we saw... Uh, some video of you and, and Mr. McCarthy together <laughs> in a very heated exchange. You're laughing because you know the, what I'm talking about. We're showing our viewers right now a piece of that tape. Could you tell us what you were talking about? Well, you know, uh, you know, Kevin and I have become uh, friends over this process, you know, uh, it, it, but, it, but it's tough. You know, there were things that I was fighting for uh, that I wanted in that rules package. And if you go back and you Such look at the Such as what we were just talking about, for example, right? right? Those details. And, yes, sir. And so when you look at the roll call vote, I actually missed when my name was called because I was meeting with leadership to make sure that those minute details weren't going to be left out because I came here to fight. You know, back home in Tennessee, I was a, a county mayor in Tennessee. That means I was like a mini governor. I had veto authority, et cetera. And during COVID, I refused to shut down. And they call me the Ron DeSantis of Tennessee because I'm going to fight on principle. And in this case, I was fighting to make sure that we, I as a member, had the ability to cut spending as we go forward because our spending patterns are unsustainable and our current recessionary environment is proof of that. Final question, do you have confidence that Kevin McCarthy shares your goals? You know what, the reason why I changed my vote is because this process is based off of trust. And when I stood up, I said, as an act of good faith to my colleagues, I changed my vote. And so that is built on trust. And so, yes, we have accountability measures on both sides of the equation. And I think we're, I, in fact, I know we're going to get there. When? Uh, well, I know we're going to get there on the rules package. When we elect a speaker, cross your fingers, I think it'll be tonight. All right. Uh, look, we, we know you're doing yeoman's work there. And again, if, if, if Kevin McCarthy just kind of slipped into that position, uh, I don't think we would have made as much progress. I know it was dirty. It, it looked bad in some cases, but... A lot of people all over, particularly, it's interesting, those Congress people, there are a couple that came from Eastern European and communist countries, uh, from Cuba, et cetera. Uh, they say this is, this is a lot better than the alternative, what we're seeing now. It looks like you got some real important details. Andy Ogles, great to see you. Thank you very much. And, and come back and see us again. We appreciate yes, sir, the work you're doing.